the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, he voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night divine. us to love one another. His law is love and its gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we, let all earth in us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, let ever, ever praise thee, no Good evening. Welcome to the Nativity of the Lord. Merry Christmas. As we begin this liturgy together, we ask that you please turn off all electronic devices. We thank our parishioners and visitors to St. Raphael's for wearing their masks. Missalettes are available for a free will offering. Please call the rectory. The rectory remains closed, but accepting phone calls Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The north door may be used as an exit only. Please exit the church immediately after Mass so the church can be sanitized. The presider of this Mass is Father Holtz.
Please rise. Christmas. We made it. <laughs> this is where we belong. This is why we're here. This is what we waited for for the year. So we begin as we begin all our masses. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Oh, God, our light 
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful, from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Today is born our Savior. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> we made it, huh? <laughs> A little bit different this year. Everything, everything, everything is a little bit different this year, isn't it? Compared to every year that we've known, what a year. You know, and, and even coming here, you know where you belong, and that's why you're here. And it's good to see 
you hear. Um, but how different even this is. You know, you came through the door and we're counting people because that's got to be done. That's different. We, we, uh, limits, unfortunately, it's disappointing that we did not reach the limit tonight, but limits from the church on, on how many should we're allowed to have in, and that's different. The spraying in between each mass with the, you know, the stuff going up to all of the pews and on the walls, and that's different. And the masks, the masks, the masks. I know how uncomfortable they are, but we're wearing them, we're doing it for each other. The mask isn't for the person who's wearing it, it's for somebody else. So I pray, you know, just please keep that in mind. We, this parish has sacrificed for nine months Different times are being closed, different things happening, and all it takes is one person, and it can everything that we did could go out the window. So, as uncomfortable as they are, please be conscious of the mass. So, of all of these things that have changed, but not everything, not everything has changed. We're here today because we know something that has not changed. We're here for something that will never change. God creator of the universe, who made all that there is, God took on human flesh and became like us, human, true God and true man, in the same person, incomprehensible, incomprehensible, true God and true man. How can you fit all that God is, everything that makes God God, how can you fit that into a human form? You know, the church grappled with that for centuries. But we knew, and we know, that it's true. Even if we can't fully understand it, we know Jesus Christ really, really, really is God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. And Jesus Christ really, really, really is human. You know, when we heard, when Father Anthony just read and said, you know, and the time came for Mary. Well, this, this is the way it works with humans. This is going to happen right now, Mary. We're not going to wait for you to find a better place. We're not going to wait until Joseph gets more money or we find... No, no, no. This is what it is to be human. When the time comes, the time comes. This afternoon, we read a, the genealogy. You remember that, that from the Bible? This begat that, begat that, but up, but up, but up, and it goes on for quite a ways. And point of that is the same thing, human. You know, back then, when they would have heard all of those names, some of them might have said, you know, those last couple of generations, they lived around here. We, we kind of knew where they lived. My grandparents ate with those people, we worshiped with them. They're real humans, and Jesus came from them. And then, if they're going back a little further, when they heard that whole list at the beginning of Matthew, and they say, you know, I, I know who they're talking about. Maybe not all of them. But I could say, I know that God was with Abraham. He called him out in the desert and Abraham went. Abraham went and God said to him, I'm going to give you so many descendants, it's going to be like the, the stars in the sky. So there's another one, King David. Oh yeah, we know King David. King David, God was with King David. And he was told, your descendant is going to have a kingdom that will never end. God was with him too. And God, they figured, must be with Jesus. And then finally the realization that Jesus is not only with God, but Jesus is God. Wow. Wow. That's why we're here. That's why we're here tonight. Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Amazing. Even more amazing is when you think about why did you do that? Why did you come? Why are you in, the, in, a, in a manger? Why did you come? Well, obviously, he comes because he loves us. But he comes because he knows we need him. We need him. We need God, man, in our lives. It's not just nice. It's not just comforting. Isn't this nice? I've, I've got my, my imaginary friend Jesus with me. No, no, we need him. Jesus came so that sins could be forgiven. Only God can do that. 
And we, I, certainly I know, I don't have to go back to Adam to go looking for where sins are. You know, the, unfortunately, way too often I can find them a little closer to home. So we look at the sins in our own lives. Those times when we haven't lived according to God's plan. And I reflect on, you know, why did you give us these commands? Why did you give the Old Testament over 600 laws that, that they were memorized and the Beatitudes? Why did you give us all this in the first place? You know, I remember when I was a kid and I thought, you know, Jesus led the Hebrews out of Egypt. I said, well, what are you giving us these? Give them the rules. We've been good. Then give them some rules. He says, I'm giving them to you. He says, why did we do that? So we could discipline ourselves? I think it's bigger than that. Is it so that he could show his power? Look, I'm God. You'll do what I say because I said so. That's just ridiculous. No. God gave us all of these because he knows even better than we do how we were made, who we are. He knows what will bring our joy, our happiness, our fulfillment. So when he tells us in his, in his commandments, in his, don't steal, he says it because I know you will never find real happiness as a thief. He says, don't lie. You will never be fulfilled outside of the truth. Don't submit to sins of lust because you're going to miss the real beauty of that other person that you're going to see in a way that, that isn't good for you. But all of these start out with, don't act like you or me. First command, I am God. Me, only me. I am have the source of your fulfillment. I am the source of your fulfillment. Come to me. We don't always do that, do we? You know, like, how often we can look for shortcuts for stealing and lying and then lust. I, I, you know, I look for a shortcut and I think that stuff or money is going to make me happy and next thing you know I'm fudging some numbers on my tax return or I, I, I say something that isn't quite true and I I say in my head, well, that's just a little white lie to keep peace or so somebody else is happy when really it's more likely about I want them to think I'm a nice guy. Or I look in those, in those lust areas at someone and see beauty not as an expression of God love as I should be seeing it. Wow, what creative art you have. Instead I see some, a person as an object and I miss out on the real beauty. And then so often, you know, and especially in these days when I could turn on four or five different channels and get 17 different variations of law and order, I try to rationalize or justify what I've done. Now, when I do that, I've made myself God, haven't I? I'll decide what's right. I'll decide how far I can bend the rules. I'll do that. That's not right. That's breaking the first command. That's not free will. Free will is, is when I decide if I will follow what is right. Free will is not saying I will make what is right. That's the sin of Adam. You know, eat this tree and you can decide what's right or wrong. Well, hold the phone. No, that's not the way it works. Deciding what is right, that's already been decided. We don't do that. So, when I look at those times that I have sinned and that I have not followed out the, the laws or the plan that God has for us, us, not just me, but the, he, the rules that he has for us. And I realized, wow, who did I sin against? I sinned against a perfect God, a perfect, loving God. How could I ever make up for offending perfection? How could I ever get back to the perfection that was in me before I was made. Because I know I can't do it myself. It's like if I, if I dirty the rag, I can't use a dirty rag to clean something else. Whatever it touches is going to remain dirty. Any of my atonements or my recognitions, you know, I can heap all my sins on a goat and send them into the desert. Well, when I did that, I did it with sinful hands or still with a sinful, dirty heart. I need something perfect to bring me back to perfection. I don't have it. I need something perfect. 
da, da, da. Here I come. Jesus says, that's why I'm coming. I'm coming because this is what you need. I'm coming, perfection to the rescue. I'm coming for you. I'm, and I'm going to allow you your dignity by saying humanity will make up for the sins that it has created in the first place. And I will be human and humanity will give it back. Just as you sinned against me, I will be in you to give this back. I will allow humanity to clean it up. I will offer, I will give you a perfect sacrifice because I'm going to give you me. Amazing. That's why we're here. God says, I'm going to give you me. For any times it may have been messed up that you won't be able to clean up on your own, I'm here. You see, he didn't come to say, I want to be with you at a meal, although we do pray at every meal, right? Every meal for your bounty to Christ our Lord. He didn't come to simply be my buddy or my friend or, or my consoler, although I know he is, it, so that I don't feel abandoned. I'm not going to re-say that point. You know, I say it to the kids at every 7th and 8th grade class. You cannot, you can't be abandoned. I am never abandoned. There can never be one second, one second from now until the end of eternity that you are not loved, period. For any of those times where we can get confused and say, nobody loves me or I'm not lovable, can't happen, it can't happen. God, who created you because he loved you in the first place, well, he never changed. So if I walk away from it, he still loves. There will not be one second from now until the eternity that you are not loved. Please remember that. It can't happen. You love me in the womb. You loved me before I was in the womb. You loved me when you made the sun and the moon and the stars. I was part of the plan. That love eventually comes to him saying, I'm going to be with you right here but not simply as a companion, not simply as somebody to make you feel better. I'm coming for you so that we can say at Mass, when I need something perfect to give back to perfection, now I can do it. Now I can say at Mass, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. I got something perfect now. We can say, we offer you, God, the body and blood, soul of divinity, of Jesus. He's doing this for us. He gave himself to us, so now I have something to give you. You know how often when we do go to Lent and we say 40 days, this is what we're going to do. You know, by the, the 40th day, I want my fifth or sixth attempt at something. And here's Jesus saying, I'm going to give you something perfect. For everything that you tried, I'm going to do this for you. Now, now we have something perfect. Now we have something real to give. We have Jesus because he gave himself to us. Humanity, Jesus, offers perfect divinity, Jesus, to the Father. He came because we needed him, and we know it. That's what makes it. it. I know Phillips been waiting for me to say it. That's what makes this our day. Because we know it. I know I needed you. I know you came. I know that I, I was short and something. And you came. I know that they, I was made in a way that was going to need you. And I recognize it. And you came. Man. We need you in our sinfulness. We need you. These days, when we look at what's going on right now, I need you in our sickness. I need you in my confusion about what's going on. I need you in my fear. Or sometimes, I need you in my doubt. Lord Jesus, please, let me recognize you in your coming. You came. You know I needed you, and you came. Lord Jesus, for many of us, and for most of our lives, I, we need you now more than ever. We've got it from so many different fronts, physical, financial, every different 
outside of us, including the inside, saying, God, help us. We do need you. We, we get to recognize who you are and that you come. We get to recognize, man, the end of this is not bad. The end of this is good because you're already here. I know I can rely on you. You showed me and show me and show me and show me. You came and you allowed yourself to be born in a major just like every other human is. And you come to every single mass that said, why? Because you know we need you. And you're not going to leave us hanging. that Jesus came and they did a great job didn't they that um, certainly on a much more limited budget than they've had in prior years <laughs> but the volunteers put their heart into it and that's what we see we see the heart of Jesus and the heart of our volunteers so we're going to bless this but as anybody who's ever asked me to bless anything knows my first line is it's not about the I don't make lucky charms it's about the people so in blessing this manger the blessing falls on all those who look on it and are reminded Almighty God, we ask you a blessing on this symbol of your incarnation. We know that you are among us, and we ask you to bless all those who look on this scene and remember that, and remember you. We know that you are with us now and always. Help us to always recognize you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now as we stand together, we profess the faith that makes us one. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, you came to us because we needed you. Confident of your presence, we come to you this day with our needs as we pray for ourselves, as we pray for the church, and as we pray for the world. For our Holy Father, bishops and priests, May the Lord continue to bless them in their ministry of heralding the birth of Jesus, the Son of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who hold political power, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help them to use their position for the sake of the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For migrant families who travel in search of a home, May they, through the mercy of God, find welcome, support, and help to start a new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those serving in the military and all first responders and their families, for comfort and hope for those torn by violence, and for a just and lasting peace 
for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a greater respect for the value of human life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an increase in the recognition of vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, religious life, and dedicated lay people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who experience illness of body, mind, or spirit from this virus and from every other illness, including those who have asked for our prayers, Jerry Sweeney, Lillian Markinkowski, Adriano and Ryan Sapugay, and for those mentioned in our bulletin, may they and their caregivers feel God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the parish of St. Raphael, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week from this virus and from every other illness, including Ethel Kehoe, Peter Sheridan, Frank DiRienzo, Edward McElroy, Promise Day, and for all our loved ones who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our intentions, those given to the ministry of praise and those that remain in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we know that you love us. We know that you hear us. We ask that you grant these petitions if they are indeed in accord with your will. We ask them as we ask all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise the glory of his name. 
Wow, we're good. And look at the balls. May the oblation of today's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord. We pray that through this most holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, have of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices with which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the true, to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. May you, O Lord, and your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope, health, and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred name, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate. Especially the glorious Heavenly Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and mother, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Clemens, 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 Six, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Pythagoras, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, know all your sins, blessed that through their merit prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, we pray, O Lord, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us 
the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, and to you, almighty God, his Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, in the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, and we may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicita, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucia, Agnese, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but, grant, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord.
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them and bestow them on us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we, who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity, may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness in the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his son's savings birth be announced to shepherds by an angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation <clears throat> brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. You can't stop Christmas. Period. The The Mass has ended. Go forth glorifying God by your love. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.